In this era of reviving cult classics to be introduced to new audiences, there has been some movement to bring back yet another classic pop culture icon. There are rumors that a fresh attempt is being made to bring Flash Gordon back to the big screen. In this video, I'd like to discuss and review the history of the Flash Gordon universe and break down what we know so far about the recent attempts to revive this beloved property. Flash Gordon first appeared in 1934 as a sci-fi adventure comic strip created and originally illustrated by Alex Raymond. While heavily inspired by, and created initially to compete with the highly successful Buck Rogers comic strip that debuted in 1929, Flash Gordon soon became an icon standing on its own merit and with its own contributions to pop culture throughout the decades. The initial premise for this space opera was also inspired by Philip Wiley's novel When Worlds Collide, including themes of an approaching planet threatening to impact Earth and mankind's efforts to survive by building a rocket ship. The story in the comic strip begins with the discovery that an unknown planet is threatening to collide with Earth. Flash Gordon, a Yale graduate and world-renowned polo player, is on a transcontinental flight along with fellow passenger Dale Arden. When meteors begin to bombard Earth, one ends up striking the wing of their airplane and Flash and Dale have to escape using a parachute. They end up landing near the observatory of the brilliant yet mad scientist Dr. Hans Zarkov, who has built a rocket ship to be able to locate the source of the meteors with the hope of stopping the impending disaster. In his desperate state, he ends up abducting Flash and Dale to make the journey with him. The trio land on planet Mongo where they learn the evil ruler Ming the Merciless is behind the threat to Earth. The trio end up having many adventures on planet Mongo, visiting its strange kingdoms found throughout, and clashing with other villains. Eventually their travels lead to other worlds. The striking visuals and illustrations of the exotic locales found in this new environment was a feast for the eyes and stirred the imagination of many as it seemed to transport readers into these strange new realms. The popularity of the comic strip surged as it came to be featured in more and more newspapers across the US and internationally. It eventually surpassed the fame of Buck Rogers and came to be regarded as one of the best illustrated and most influential adventure comics. Alex Raymond would achieve acclaim as one of the most famous science fiction artists of all time. His artistic style heavily influenced the look of early comic book superheroes. Flash Gordon's appearance featuring tights and a cape would go on to inspire Jerry Siegel and Joe Shuster's design of Superman. The cover of Detective Comics No. 27 featured the first appearance of Batman and was based on one of Raymond's depictions of Flash. The costume for DC's Hawkman was also modeled after the Flying Hawkman featured in Flash Gordon. Similar to the breakout success of Buck Rogers, the adventures of Flash Gordon went on to be featured across multiple forms of media and merchandise. The story of the comic strip was adapted into a brief radio serial in 1935, and soon after into three film serials produced by Universal between 1936 and 1940 starring Buster Crabbe. It was these film serials that would eventually be shown as reruns on television in the 1950s this would continue to have a major impact on space operas and the world of pop culture. A new live-action television series also premiered in 1954, but ran for only 39 episodes. Starring Steve Holland, Joseph Nash, and Irene Champlin, the series rebooted the original story of Flash, Dr. Zarkov, and Dale, featuring them as agents of the Galactic Bureau of Investigation in the year 3203, which follows their adventures as they travel back in time to 1953 Berlin. The short-lived series was well-received, though it was the previous film series that aired on television around the same time that proved to have the most impact on the future of science fiction. George Lucas often cites that those original Buster Crab serials fascinated him as a child. Growing up and seeing how crude they had become, it was then his dream to adapt the epic space opera with the help of modern filmmaking techniques. In the early 70s, Lucas had attempted to make a Flash Gordon film based on the comic strips, Unable to acquire the rights, he went on to create his own space opera, Star Wars. Star Wars was an instant commercial hit and became one of the most successful sci-fi franchises of all time. To capitalize on the unprecedented success of Star Wars, the green light was given to start production on a new live-action Flash Gordon film, which debuted in 1980. 
Its story was loosely based on the original comic strip and starred Sam Jones as Flash Gordon, Melody Anderson as Dale Arden, with standout performances from Max von Sydow as Ming the Merciless, and Brian Blessed as Prince Fulton, leader of the Hawkmen. The vibrant and intricate sets and costumes paid homage to the original comic and subsequent film serials. This visual spectacle was also backed by an epic rock score composed entirely by Queen, who also created the famous signature theme song. The film garnered mixed reviews from critics and general audiences, but was overall positive, and though it was nowhere close to the success of Empire Strikes Back, which came out that same year, it did end up grossing double its production budget when adding in the international box office numbers. The campy spectacle was remembered fondly through the years, becoming a cult classic. The Adventures of Flash Gordon went on to be adapted into several different animated series throughout the 80s and 90s. The last live-action adaptation of the story premiered in 2007 on the Sci-Fi Channel and featured Eric Johnson, known for his role as Whitney in Smallville, playing the title character. Unfortunately, the show ended up being cancelled after only one season. Though not every attempt to bring Flash Gordon off of the printed page was a success, the space opera itself continued to have a huge influence on future comic book and sci-fi properties, and has been referenced many times in shows and movies. Several episodes of Star Trek Voyager featured a holodeck program called The Adventures of Captain Proton that was clearly modeled after the comics and film serials. The visual style of the film Scott Pilgrim vs. The World was inspired by the comics. More direct references were from Seth MacFarlane's TED films, which featured an appearance from Sam Jones in TED 2. While the property itself may seem campy and somewhat obscure, general audiences seem primed to embrace a fresh attempt at reviving this pop culture icon. Modern audiences have become even more familiar with fantastic science fiction stories set in the far reaches of outer space. Through the course of Marvel's Infinity Saga, films such as Thor Ragnarok and Guardians of the Galaxy have featured incredibly vibrant sets and unique intergalactic heroes with big personalities. It seems that now would be the perfect time to reintroduce the property that inspired what modern audiences have come to enjoy. Hollywood has been attempting to reboot the Flash Gordon franchise for years. In 2010, Breck Eisner first had signed on to direct what would have been a 3D film version, though it never got off the ground. Later in 2014, The Hollywood Reporter revealed that 20th Century Fox was developing a new reboot of the original comic strip with J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay, who had worked previously on Star Trek Beyond to write the script, and Matthew Vaughn set to direct. More changes were to come, however. In 2018, Matthew Vaughn, once slated to direct, switched to producing the project with John Davis, and Julius Avery was brought on to write and direct the new Flash Gordon film. Avery had previously directed Overlord for Paramount and J.J. Abrams' Bad Robot. In 2019, however, the concept for the new Flash Gordon changed entirely. In an article from Deadline in June of 2019, it was reported that 20th Century Fox was in the process of merging with Disney, and under its leadership, it was decided to bring on Thor Ragnarok director Taika Waititi to quote, crack the Flash Gordon reboot. Another big change is that the film itself would now be animated. However, once the merger was officially completed two months later, Disney decided to cancel a slew of productions previously in development at Fox, which included the animated Flash reboot. There have been a series of ups and downs over the past decade trying to get this new Flash Gordon film off the ground. Hollywood certainly is interested in continuing the property, but seems unsure of how to proceed. They may have started with considering who could possibly play Flash. According to a recent article from We Got This Covered, their sources say Chris Hemsworth is being considered for the role in a live-action film reboot, which, if Taika Waititi is still involved in the project, could prove to be another great team-up. I must say I much prefer the idea of a live-action format over the animated route for this property. However, having said that, the film would definitely need to have that same bold visual style in the same spirit of the comics. And considering the overwhelming success of Thor Ragnarok and the Guardians of the Galaxy films, which featured intricate and unusual sets, as well as characters with a wide variety of personalities, and a killer soundtrack to boot, now might be the best time if they were to attempt to revive this franchise. But I'm curious to know what you think about these repeated attempts to reboot this beloved sci-fi property. How do you feel about Chris Hemsworth possibly taking on the role of Flash Gordon? 
Do you think Taika Waititi would be a good fit to direct this potential film? Let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe for more sci-fi and fantasy content. Thank you all so much for your support, and as always, have a very nerdy day. Gordon's alive!